Well, welcome back to another week's analysis behind the news. Now, I'm going to go over some things I've gone over recently, but I'm going to tie a number of things together to give you a better sense of what's going on between the Russia and the United States. Now, this is a book that I have that I carry a lot of documentation in when I give my speeches publicly on terrorism. If any of you are interested in, uh, in booking any of those, contact our speakers department. But I want to go through a litany first of, of volumes uh, and just kind of let you glance at the covers to that serve as documentation of the fact that Russia has always been involved in the terrorist apparatus around the world, uh, even including Muslims. And this is particularly the books that point to that. These are Russian uh, publish, publications uh, of some years ago. The uh, Soviet Power in Islam. And here's one, uh, the speeches of Brezhnev, uh, published in the Soviet Union. Red Star over Bethlehem of, of uh, Soviet terrorism behind Muslims. Uh, terrorism, the Soviet Connection is another book. Uh, here's another one, uh, Behind the Desert, Behind Desert Storm. Uh, this one's particularly uh, valuable, The New Lies for Old by Anatoly Galitsyn, where he showed that the second in command, now the first in command of Al-Qaeda, is a Russian asset. Uh, this one is just out by WorldNet Daily uh, Publishing, and it's called Disinformation. And it documents the fact that the uh, Soviet Union sent literally tens of thousands of people into uh, Islamic uh, nations to stir them up into terrorism. And of course they armed them. They, they were the, uh, for instance, the Hamas organization, their websites are handled out of Russia. Uh, Hezbollah is completely uh, armed by uh, Russia, uh, so on and so forth. The only problem with the disinformation is uh, the book is that it gives you all this earlier documentation and then later, but it doesn't connect the dots uh, for about a decade in between. Well, I say 10,000s of agents because the author of disinformation as a, a, a key man in the KGB apparatus said that by the time he defected in 1979, five, uh, four or 5,000 agents had already been sent into the Muslim countries by Russia and the KGB at that time. So I'm assuming that, up, uh, that at least uh, another 5,000 were sent in in the ensuing 10 years, probably more. Uh, but at any rate, I want to tie all this together because what we see are things that are very disturbing. I may have mentioned a couple of weeks ago that Putin uh, said that Snowden can say, stay in Russia as long as he doesn't damage our American partners, is the way he puts it. And that's a strange word, except we see that being used a great deal in the speeches of uh, our own presidents. H.W. Uh, Bush referred to our Russian partners. Clinton referred to our Russian partners. Uh, George W. referred to our Russian partners. Uh, these are the various uh, documentations of the speeches uh, and public pronouncements of American presidents referring to Russia being a partner. And the interesting thing is that if you go back, you'll discover that George W. Bush actually uh, signed this agreement, a charter for Russian, uh, excuse me, a charter for American-Russian partnership and friendship. This was back, released by the White House on June 17, 1992, a partnership with the Soviet, uh, with uh, Russia. And, and so we see in this partnership a number of things happening. I've talked about the uh, overflights over our military bases based on the Open Skies Treaty, where the Russians can fly over American bases and detect whether or not we're getting ready to go to war. Uh, this is to maintain the peace, so to speak. Uh, this was done uh, particularly starting in 12, uh, uh, 2012. Uh, then what we saw was the Spitznaz troops and United States Special Forces training at Fort Carson in anti-terrorism tactics again in 1920, uh, I mean uh, 2012, excuse me. Then we saw them engaged in Vigilant Eagle with NORAD, North American uh, Command where the Russians actually got into NORAD headquarters inside the mountain, 
Colorado Springs, and they participated together on an anti-terrorist attack on an airplane. Uh, then we see just a few weeks ago that the Russians and the Americans signed an agreement between FEMA and the Russian Emergency Min Ministry for interchange of personnel for major events to trade expertise and handle crowd control at the Olympics, Super Bowl, that kind of thing. And, but we also know that back in, uh, in 24, uh, 2004, the FBI and the FSB, that's the renamed KGB, it's the FSB now, signed an agreement to join forces to fight terrorism. As a result, the FBI established offices in Kiev and Moscow. So there's this continual uh, interplay between our security forces. Uh, and so if you were behind terrorism, as we've maintained in the John Birch Society all along, wouldn't you like to know your adversary's uh, command uh, network, uh, your command structure, uh, the uh, type of equipment you use, uh, how you communicate, uh, the various scenarios and how you will react given to these scenarios and everything else, if you were going to be able to handle the terrorists? That would be wonderful intelligence to know. Well, if you or I gave some of these secrets to Russia, we could be tried under the Espionage Act. But instead, we have the people at the very top of our government supplying this information with so-called interacting anti-terrorist activities with a partnership. So with over, over, uh, over, uh, open skies. They know what's going on at our, our military bases. Uh, with the Spitznats uh, operating with U.S. Special Forces, they understand how our Special Forces react and communicate in regard to terrorism. Uh, with Vigilant Eagle, they know how our Air Force is going to react and how they communicate. With FEMA, they're even going to know how the civilian security forces are going to react and communicate. Uh, you know, with security guards at, at stadiums and, and that sort of thing, out on the street with local police and so on and so forth. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know if you're the enemy? If you're the one behind all the terrorism, wouldn't that be priceless information to have? We've been giving it to them. We've been doing it in this so-called partnership. It's a very dangerous thing. You know, since 9-11 and immediately after 9-11, we saw Putin... Uh, put together a Russian organization to fight terrorism, and it was to have two arms, Russian and American. And he named the, the leaders of this organization so that the Russians and the Americans could work together to fight terrorism. Now, if Putin did it, that should make you worry enough. But the man that he got to head up the American wing of this joint Russian partnership was Henry Kissinger. A uh, real new order, a uh, new world order, internationalist, a kind of a man that his whole adult life has seemed to work to uh, the advantage of the communist bloc more than the United States, even as national security advisor. He's the man that opened up China, for instance, uh, that sort of thing. But he is now, or was, made immediately the chairman of the American wing of this Russian committee. It was going to be a Russian committee under Putin Half and half Americans and Russians. He adds up the American wing. The other one that he got was uh, Primakov, and he heads up the Russian end of it. The interesting thing about Primakov is that he was the former head of the KGB. Before that, he was in charge of training Muslim terrorists for the Soviet Union, arming them, getting them involved in planning and everything else. And so, what you think is all this Muslim terrorist is really run out of Moscow. Still is. Always was. Uh, the Anatolia Khomeini, the man who took over Iran, was a Russian asset. Uh, the man that was the head of the PLO, Yasser Arafat, was a Russian asset. And his uh, successor was likewise trained by the Russians. So what's going on here is they're getting in here, courtesy of our own government, to find out how we respond and react to terrorist activities, and then they can transfer that information to their terrorist organizations. And of course, they, they do it in a carom situation to where the FSB does this, they get a satellite country to do that, they get an organization to do this, and then they get an individual to do that, and it's hard to trace it back to Moscow. 
uh, was traced back to Moscow with the assassination of John Paul, uh, Pope John Paul. But at any rate, these are the things that are going on. It's a very dangerous situation. It's all being done in the name of peace. We would never have invited the Gestapo to the United States to find out how we're going to react to a sabotage uh, operation by German intelligence. That's just nuts. Uh, but we do it with the Russians. Even when they, everything that they do lets us know that they're going to be a future enemy. They already are. It's a very dangerous situation. It's crazy. And we've got to put a stop to it. Till next week, we'll see you then.